Hey folks, Will Brink here, uh, BrinkZone.com, and topic I want to cover today that's getting a fair amount of traction on the net at least is protein spiking. And well, what is protein spiking? Protein spiking is technically is uh, adding non-protein compounds to protein powders to get the protein content up on testing. That is, these are they may be just inexpensive amino acids. Uh, creatine will do it. There's some other compounds that will increase. Uh, the protein content when you test it but doesn't really actually add protein to the powder you're taking and so it's a bit of a, a trick uh, that companies can use to get a falsely high protein number on the can which is not actually uh, in there as far as your body is concerned to make it simple so um, how can you figure this out well sometimes you can you can figure it out by looking at the label and seeing what's being put in there and match it up to the protein content can seem off, but you know, for the most part, most people really are going to have difficulty figuring that out, and a lot of times you can't. I mean, it's it may not be listed on the label. Um, big question, of course, million dollar question here is, well, how common is this? And the answer is, uh, don't really know, uh, because it hasn't been systematically tested across the board on various companies and stuff. So that leaves the consumer um, in something of a rock and a hard place. Uh, I honestly don't think. Um, being having worked in the industry a long time and doing consulting work for uh, major protein manufacturers and supplement companies, I honestly don't see major protein manufacturers doing this. Uh, they really is too much to lose on their end. There is too much revenue to lose by being caught doing this type of thing. Um, that's my gut instinct, having worked for a number of the larger manufacturers. Uh, it's probably more likely if that's going on, it's happening more in the uh, intermediate stage, that is during contract manufacturing. The protein, uh, if you see my other videos, for example, how your supplements get made, that is, uh, will give you some insight into the sort of intermediate manufacturing. Uh, now that could happen with the end sub, the retail supplement company not knowing this, or it could happen with them knowing it and approving it or even formulating it that way. Uh, that's another issue, does the, does the company that has having this this product manufactured for them know this is going on or they don't that is another another issue uh, like I say I think the the general advice at the moment would be the usual that I've given which is stick to known brands of known uh, reputations larger companies as a rule uh, obviously have more to lose than smaller uh, fly-by-night types on the net uh, and that's you know that's the best advice you're going to get right now there actually is a uh, class action suit that's being uh, started over this and so we might actually get more details on how common this is and who's doing it and who who knew about it and who didn't um, you know sometimes uh, lawyers looking for a payday on class action suits actually do some good uh, as far as consumers are concerned and this may be one of those areas so right now we're just sort of going to have to uh, stay tuned in, in, as far as more details as to who's protein spiking and who isn't and how big is it and who knew what uh, this is all going to have to come out in the wash uh, it's not something, honestly, uh, I would worry about a whole lot again, uh, purchasing protein powders from, uh, you know, the larger known manufacturers. But we uh, will find out uh, exactly, again, how common, who's doing it, where is it happening, is it happening at the, at the actual production stage, is it happening at the intermediate stage, and so forth. And there really, right now, aren't a lot of answers to that, but it is one of those uh, sort of um, uh, dirty secrets of the supplement industry, uh, a wink wink nod nod you know if you don't want to spend uh, a lot of money on a high quality isolate you can put in a lot less of it add in some of these nitrogen uh, containing compounds that don't really add anything to the protein and voila you get a a higher protein content than is actually in there so uh, I hope this info helps I uh, hopefully I will update as I get more details uh, as I get them myself and uh, if you like this channel you might want to sub up because uh, as usual I give the uh, the no-nonsense objective science-based stuff and I'll see you all on the brink zone